Here's a picture that was, probably goes back to 1890. It's my grandfather behind that set of books. He was likely 25, 30. Yeah. He looks pretty young, so that was 1890, and 15 people were working for the company at that time. He, he already owned the, the James D. Hare Company, but in, in 1903, Grandpa bought the, the American Hotel Register Company for 10000 He combined the two companies, and in combining the companies, he decided to continue with the American Hotel Register name. He had been a bookbinder. Uh, Thomas L. Play bookbinder. We find some of the stamps around still. They were binders of register books for the hotel industry. It was required by law that strangers had to register from out of town so that the sheriff would know who's in town. He had originally been at, uh, I think, 51 West Washington. Then they bought four tenement houses at the corner of Franklin and Ontario in 1912. In 1913, he put up a, uh, a six-story uh, concrete and steel building. And here's a picture of him in, in his brand new office in 1914. And he put, he put the name Leahy Building at the very top of his... So when you're driving by it's, there, it's you still look there. for the, the Leahy Building, inside. and he built that building. Thomas Leahy, he died in the 30s, and when he died, he left the company to my grandfather, James. Took it over uh, 1932 at the age of 26. I don't know that he was given a choice about going into the business. I think it was simply taken for granted. But he did keep the company going uh, through the, the Depression and then World War II. He didn't fire anyone. I think he had to take money from other places and he had to take it from, out of his pocket to support the company. And I, I once asked him, why? <laughs> why don't you just close the company? And he said, I had nothing else. That was it. That's simple. That was his life. And these were his people. And he couldn't, he couldn't leave them out in the street. It was who he was. My grandfather wasn't as much into expanding it and growing it. He liked things the way they were. He wanted it to be predictable and it's what we do. We don't need to do anything more. That's too much of a risk. My grandfather worked on a map of all the hotels and motels in the United States. And he really liked to spend his time editing a directory that his dad had produced for the hotel industry. Back in those days, there weren't the free listings of all the Marriott's and Best Westerns. Instead, he put out something for the traveler who in those days was traveling by rail. He rode off to all the chambers of commerce in the, in the country and he would ask what were the names of their hotels, how many rooms did they have, how much did it cost to stay there, and what was the address and phone number. It became Leahy's Hotel and Motel Guide and Travel Atlas. And it would list, so if you were a salesman, you would buy this book for $12, something like that. People really relied on it in the early days. In 1965, uh, my father dropped the keys in my hand and he went to work on this travel guide. And the company was so small, it was actually three different divisions. Uh, one was his travel guide, one was his advertising branch where we actually had salespeople out. And, and thirdly, the, the, the actual catalog part of the business in 1965 was only about $250,000 a year. When my father had gone downstairs to uh, put out his travel guide, I had eliminated the advertising and then expanded the catalog. One of the very first things I did was uh, contact 80 major manufacturers and ask them if they wanted to be in our catalog. They all responded positively and, and start, I started adding all these products. The company was uh, growing so fast that, that uh, I begged my brother uh, Jim to come to work, which had been our plan from the time he was, we were little kids together. He wrote me when I was, in, I was bumming around Europe. He said, you know, there's some real opportunities here, not so much on the printing side, but in all those, those loads and loads of other things that, that hotels buy. And I said, well, give it a shot for a while and see where it goes. A couple of years later, Pat joined the company. At that time, there were only 17 employees. When 
I was seven years old and he was nine years old, we were actually changing the name of the company. We had this dream at, that, at those ages. Uh, American was too confining. So literally, over 60 years ago, we came up with uh, international supply. When I was nine years old and he was 11 years old, we planned the first five companies we were gonna buy, and we ended up buying them all. We are never asked by our father. It was never assumed by our father we'd ever come into the business. Uh, so as young kids, we determined on our, by ourselves that our fortunes and futures were intertwined. In 1966, I was just going to try to increase the number of pages and in, in just test products. In the meantime, Tom was very, very good at the fulfillment side, inventory control and all that. My dad was watching the, the books. He came back and took the catalog to where I'd grown it to, you know, 100 and some pages, to the thousands of pages that it is today, and really the company just took off. He did the catalog on our dining room table every September until probably February. And Jim would do the whole layout of each page of the catalog. And growing up, yeah, he always had a home office doing work. It took five years to go from a half million dollars, which was our sales in 1966, it took five years to 71 to, to sell a million dollars worth of merchandise. And during that time, I had gone from 100 pages to probably close to 450 pages. Once we hit a million dollars, we probably hit five million within another five years. And then 10 million a couple of years later, it, we started really, really growing. From just a small printing operation, uh, printing primarily just forms for the hotel industry, uh, we became a, a master distributor supplier to the industry and other industries uh, uh, since then uh, through the growth of the catalog. What's most amazing with both my father and, and my uncles has been they've been able to change over the lifetime because our business hasn't stayed the same. It's amazing how the three brothers worked together as a family to bring their personal strengths to make this company grow the way it has. Jim is particularly good, I think, at product and operations. Um, Tom is probably the most inspirational leader that we have and very good at the logistics and transportation side. And Pat, quite frankly, was by far the most sophisticated, socially graceful of the three of them. My, my father was a great networker. Uh, within the industry, he was well respected. I would say that he was able to bring a lot of customers to the table. He always said that the reason he stayed here was because he just loved the people in this business. The hospitality industry was going through some fundamental changes. You know, it was driven by the changes in transportation. When the travel moved from railroads to the highways and to the airlines, uh, it, it made national business a lot easier and a lot more people traveled. It was just cheaper. Hotels started springing up all over the place. So we, we filled out that, that need and we really grew. We grew to about 40 to 50 million dollars with a catalog alone. And that was the beginning of the real company as we know it today. So by 1977, we realized we really had to find a new home. We bought a 10-acre uh, parcel in Northbrook. I think I was maybe seven or so when the building in Northbrook, when they broke ground on that. I remember being there for the ceremony. There's a photograph of all of us standing around a sign, and it was the whole big extended family. Originally, the office was only 12,000 feet. Over the years, we doubled that, uh, and then we doubled it again. And my father did continue uh, putting out his, uh, his travel guide, which had gone back to 1865, and just as his father had, had put it out. Listed all the hotels in the United States. We went to uh, Dad and said, you're selling our mailing list for $16. Well, you're creating uh, competition uh, for, for nothing here. So 1979 was the last edition. It had to be mid-'80s. It became obvious that we were not reaching the real concentrations of purchasing the big properties in the major metropolitan areas. These were all purchasing face-to-face -face the way they had back 
back in the days of the railroads. So we, we decided if we're going to be relevant, we're going to have to go and add a, an outside sales staff and a national sales staff. We were being regarded as a regional supplier, and I was aware that we'd better, we'd better look and, and open up distribution centers in other locations. We ended up in New Jersey. By the third year, its sales per room were up to where the Midwest was. We added then a distribution center out in Reno, Atlanta, Orlando. Senior was getting ready to step away from the presidency, and when he did that, they announced that Jim would be president. I think I became president in 85. Jim basically, as I said, ran the catalog, I ran the office and warehouse. I hit my male menopause, uh, midlife crisis, and, and uh, uh, I left the company for seven years. And my father, even though he wasn't actively running the company, he was here. He was going to American Hotel every day until right before he passed away. My father's uh, health uh, turned and died September 26, 1986. Worked up until the very end. When my father died, my mother didn't know what she was going to do. At this point, I had just coincidentally uh, left the company. So she moved into my office, became chairman of the board. How did she influence the business? Uh, women have their ways. She had her opinions. I think she definitely had an influence on uh, the direction that we all took. And she worked up right until she died in, in 1996. We ended up uh, in 1996 uh, buying the 72 acres here in Vernon Hills. When our customers come here and see this, this magnificent campus, uh, I think they're suitably impressed. I, I am accessible. I do sit down with our new people in groups of six, and I talk about specifically about the culture and about the history, who we are, what we stand for, what they're empowered to do. It, it, it's important that they know that they're not just some number out there. They are part of a humanity, of, 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 a, of a bigger something, and that they are important. I tell them they're special and important. We have wonderful, wonderful people here. I want to be working here. What keeps me going every morning is not necessarily money, it's the people that, that I work with. I have a, a, a wonderful team of salespeople that I work with. They love being here and I love working with them. The company has been there because number one, the people who have been part of it. But that idea that a family company goes beyond just the Leahy family. When we'd go in there, he would point to certain people and he'd be like, this person has been with us for 25 years, or this person has been doing their job for 16 years, or we just celebrated that this person. And so you knew that there were certain people who were the company. Our associates here have really dedicated to our family, and uh, we owe a great deal to those employees that have stuck with us and stuck by us and have really put their time and values to this company. The people that, that work there are its strength. They, you know, we're very lucky to have them. We really love those people. They're, yeah. they're very special. In a real fundamental sense, they give meaning to my life. And uh, they're, they're wonderful, wonderful people. Yeah, I feel the same way. I've kind of come into the company the last few years. I go to the office uh, two days a week. She is finding the problems, the things that, that need to be dealt with that aren't being dealt with. The carpet that is turning ragged conference room that is not very inviting or... That has been her thing and she's done a wonderful job with it. Everybody knows her. Everybody loves her. She gets a lot of visitors, but she never turns people away. My hope is that it would continue to be a family company, uh, that we would not go public. I hope with all of my heart that my dad's vision continues. I hope that somehow we can make that happen. I want it to stay together. I want to stay in our family. Yeah. Jim has 10 grandchildren. I have uh, my seventh on the way soon. But we basically designed the land to be in their names from the very beginning so that if they needed an asset to sell off, 
they had the value of the land and uh, not to uh, have to worry about ever selling the company stock. We really feel that, that they are custodians and that uh, they should be holding it for future generations. I hope that my, the next generation can understand the pride that's involved with having a family company and, and what a gift it is. And I hope they can respect where it came from. I want to see the business grow. I want to see the business continue. I, I love that there are people who are doing great work there's a strong desire for a, a legacy of a family business surviving. My grandfather must have had it, but I think my dad, since he's been in charge, he has an incredibly strong desire for the family business to stay in the family. There's been a great communication of what American Hotel Register means to the Leahy family and our generation and future generations. And it's really been instilled in us. We're stewards of this great company that you know, was started long before we were on this earth and that it's our job to, to make sure that this gets passed on to the next generation and the generation after that. Hopefully uh, our next generation, my kids and our cousin's kids, will um, be able to work here as well and will be striving in the future. It dates back to, you know, when, when President Lincoln was still alive. It's 150 years. It's within the grasp of this company to get to 200 years. So that's one of the things on, you know, our generation and the next one to make sure it gets there. We want to be around here for a long time and be here for our employees for a long time. Who knows what we'll be in 150 years, but the travel industry is not going away anytime soon. It'll always be there. It'll, it's going to continuously expanding. And the way the organization is going to continue is by staying in the family. I think that's the only way that this organization is going to continue to function as is. Hopefully, they and perhaps their children will will continue to to keep the the, the company going. But also the the family members who are not involved here. Hopefully, they will continue to, to stand behind the company. If it doesn't stay in the family, it'll simply become an economic machine for somebody else. The culture, the belief, the, what it stands for will just sort of be shoved aside. And I think that the, what it stands for it motivates the people and makes it, it's part of its success. We have a very specific culture. It's a very giving, caring culture. And it could really uh, go down quickly if if a public company or somebody else went and, and, uh, and bought it. We want to be known as being honest and fair, take care of our people and make sure that, that they're as content as can be, but also motivated and happy in their own lives and happy in their own goals. I think that there's something special about a company that's 150 years old or approaching 150 years. When, when I joined the company, it was just an old printing company, that was all, nothing, nothing more, and, and uh, I wasn't sure we really had a future. The company was, has been very successful. We've gone through different phases. We've been able to adapt. From a small printing company, we became a catalog house, opened up distribution centers, really turned into a distribution company, uh, the growth of the catalog. The catalog was 100 pages in the beginning. It kept growing and growing and growing. And it's just become progressively to the monster that it is today. And it's known as the Bible of the supply industry. I don't think the, the Leahy's are greedy. And I, I really mean that they, they see that the long-term uh, health of the company is good for the long-term health of the family. You know, Dr. Seuss says, oh, the places you'll go. And, and that's possible that each of these of this next generation will say, wow, what are the places we can go with this? I I'm sure the grandfather could not have imagined what it is today. And so my hope would be for this next generation to see the possibilities of where it could go in the future. And it's kind of exciting. It's like opening a treasure chest. I do remember way back a long time ago that Jim's mom verbalized to me, to him, that we have a responsibility to the people that work for us. I think Jim has taken that very seriously. And Tom fosters that same thinking. I think there's a deep-seated value system that's in the family culture. You asked about the Leahy legacy, and I think that's what it is. It's this deep-seated 
humility and caring and compassion that reveals itself in the work that's done there. 